A billion dollar yacht. A trillion dollar yacht. Can we grind a Ferrari in a shredder? That was called the era of excess. And what's happening now is people are like, yo, give me some raw, give me some real. YouTube is healthy, it's growing, and it's the best platform for earning money online. But YouTube has changed. The three biggest threats that I see with video content and video marketing are if you can be you, this next year is gonna be the best year of your life. Our greatest competition actually isn't external. Our greatest competition is internal. If you want to continue to win in business, you wanna to continue to win in the creator economy, you always have to do these four things. What does the future hold for online video and YouTube? In this episode of the Think Media Podcast, we're gonna be looking at some of the latest stats and opportunities when it comes to social media, the internet, and YouTube. We're also gonna be looking at some of the biggest threats, specifically three of them, and what we need to know as entrepreneurs and content creators to overcome them in this current landscape of YouTube. And then finally, how to create an unfair advantage in the marketplace right now. This episode is packed full of value. And today's episode is brought to you by the tube1kchallenge.com. We actually just kicked off our free five-day challenge, but it's not too late to join. So if you click the link in the show notes, you can learn about and join this free transformational event that will take your YouTube channel to a whole new level, even if you're just starting or you want to break through a plateau. But I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. For now, let's dive into today's content. Well, let's dive into session number one. We're gonna be talking about the future of video, threats, opportunities, and the new way to win in a saturated market. If we are just meeting, and I know some people are literally discovering Think Media, and maybe myself for the first time, and thank you so much for being here. My name is Sean Cannell. And uh, I do live now between Las Vegas and Seattle with my beautiful wife, Sonia, of 18 years. <laughs> Two boys, three and a half year old, one and a half year old, life's crazy. And my wife is the co-founder, co-owner, and CFO of our company, but she stayed back in Seattle because at this point, it's just way too much braid damage trying to travel with these kids and like, you know. And so she sends her love and her greetings, and uh, they're holding it down up there while I flew back into Vegas. Um, wrote a book called YouTube Secrets. The second edition is out uh, now if we're just meeting. Anybody read YouTube? By the way, I think if you haven't read it, you have no excuse. You should have one in, in front of you, some of, some of you at least. And uh, have started a couple different YouTube channels directly over the years, whether that's Think Media, Think Media Podcast, personal channel I've hosted some stuff on. Did a project with the co-author of YouTube Secrets called Video Influencers. And we've started other channels as well, kind of faceless channels and some other things. But when it comes to all the different stuff that I've done, what I'm most proud of is our students, and many of whom started from scratch, started from zero, and have even got all the way to a silver play button, even a gold play button. In fact, this Grow a Video Live is kind of a, a special moment because our company has grown over the years. We've been through a, a lot, and we've had some people that were there in the very early days um, and have been really ride or die with Think Media. Back when we first started our, our core system, Video Raking Academy, and one of my favorite people, her name is Mary, and she actually started YouTube right around when she was turning 60 years old, and she didn't know how to really, you know, create content or turn on the camera, all these different things about YouTube, but she punched fear in the face. She started creating content. Now, five years later, she's got a gold play button, a million subscribers. She got a book deal with Random House, and she just told me, she's here, by the way. Where is Mary? Wave at me. Where is Mary? She's here with her incredible husband, with her son, and, uh, and she's going to be on a panel later because she's got the secrets, man. You're like, hey, man, how? I want one of those play buttons. Uh, and, and she just told me that Random House just said, hey, can we do another book now? So it's so crazy. And again, some of the people that have been rolling with us, another one of those is someone by the name of Joey Dr. Eye Health, and uh, he, when he thought about doing YouTube for six months, he was just kind of like man, I didn't really have direction and discovered our main YouTube channel, Think Media. And again, he just got that a million subscriber mark, which is insane. 
And uh, Joey, stand up, man. He's going to be on a panel later today as well. Crazy. And so I have a question for you, and it's this. What is waiting for you on the other side of your next bold move? I want to thank you for coming to this conference, and I want to give you permission to dream big. That these three days is a a space we've set aside to maybe hope again. And I know that in today's culture and just with the different things that are happening, maybe you feel the algorithm and the challenges there. There's so many different pressures in life. And there's a lot of cynicism. There's so much doubt and there's a lot of discouragement. There's reason for it. But we've created a space, and I want to invite you into that space. I know you're already here, but even to come, even on a journey together, to to dream big. That I hope that you came to dream big, to maybe rethink your business strategy or YouTube strategy. Maybe you're just starting to learn and then to take massive action. Because when I think about Joey or Mary or other people you're going to hear from, they all started with zero. Right? And they all had to take a bold move, get outside of their comfort zone. And I want even just to imagine as we're starting, like, could a gold play button be waiting for you? Could that next level in your business be on the other side of taking massive action? This event is committed to helping you get massive results. And in this session, we're going to be talking about some new stats that are revealing the future of video on YouTube, the biggest threats creators and business owners need to overcome right now in this space and how you can create an unfair advantage in the marketplace. So let's talk about the future of video and sort of the state of online video and video marketing right now. So the current stats are that over 5 billion people are on social media and active. Now there's only about 8 billion people in the world, so five out of every eight humans are using social media. Not not even everybody has access to the internet. So the amount of people that you can reach just continues to grow. I've heard about 300,000 new people a month uh, are coming onto the internet still. So I know we think, man, saturation, and we think about all that stuff, but this space continues to grow. The average person is on 6.7 different social networks per month. And you might be wondering, okay, out of all the social media content types, What is the most popular? Hint, uh, grow with video. I mean, you're at the event. So video is actually the most popular. Video is hands down the most popular content type. 80% of global internet traffic is video. And in video discovered this stat, that video content is 12 times more successful than other content. I love blogs, I love audio, I love pictures, but we've seen every social media platform We've seen the original photo platform, Instagram, become all video. And we've seen all these different platforms, LinkedIn and Facebook, all of us adding video, and video is king across the board. Now, in the US, YouTube and Facebook are by far the most used online platforms for US adults. You can see on screens the numbers, and YouTube has a massive lead for just how many people are using YouTube. Right now there's 2.7 billion monthly active users on YouTube. And YouTube shows no sign of slowing down. It's the world's largest platform. It's the second largest search engine. It's playing a massive role in culture. It's also the most dominant force in young children's entertainment. Like across the board, out of everything, it is the largest, most dominant force in young children's uh, entertainment. Now, here's a cool nugget to share with people. How big is YouTube? It's actually larger than Netflix. And it continues to grow, and it earned more money single-handedly than Netflix last quarter. quarter. Now, one of the big trends that you definitely want to be paying attention to is the podcast space, and specifically video podcasting. Does anybody here have a podcast? Raise your hand. You have a podcast or a video podcast? Amazing. Maybe 25% of the room or 20%. YouTube is actually the top preferred platform for podcasts. More people are consuming podcasts on YouTube than Spotify or Apple. 
And it's, it's kind of a fact that, well, wait a minute, isn't podcast audio? Yes, of course, but the trend is everything is moving towards video. And YouTube continues to lead that trend. YouTube also is now working with RSS feeds. So if you have a YouTube first mindset, you could be creating video podcasts and simplifying your distribution, making it also easier to get started. Now, this one blew me away though. The Washington Post, this is the headline, said this, that the most consequential technology in America is YouTube. Now, I don't know, that's, that's kind of what I think, is that a, that's a crazy headline. I don't know if that's actually true. You'd think there's probably some pretty powerful technology out there. But bottom line is we absolutely need to be paying attention to YouTube. It's one of the country's largest cable TV providers. It's the top living room destination. What are people watching in their living room more than anything else? YouTube. Now, you might not be, but people are. And so how do you position yourself, your business, and your brand to capitalize on that? This article also went on to say that YouTube is the healthiest economy on the internet. It's not the perfect, perfect economy, but it's the healthiest in terms of how much money that it has a grand, ground-breaking revenue share system. That because Google sells ads, Google owns YouTube, and they sell ads to advertisers and run those ads on YouTube, that the fact they give 55% of the revenue to creators is unheard of on, every, on any other platform. And TikTok's trying to figure out how to you know, monetize and maybe getting banned, and other platforms are trying to figure out how to pay creators. But meanwhile, YouTube has created more jobs, more of an ecosystem for building a real business, for doing a YouTube small business, or leveraging YouTube, of course, to get more leads and clients for the business owners that are here. So here's the bottom line. YouTube is healthy, it's growing, and it's the best platform for earning money online. Who here would like to earn a little bit more money this year? Just raise your hand. Look at the people who didn't raise their hand and just reach right into their wallet right now or purse because <laughs> I don't even understand. Half the room is like, nah, dog, I'm good, bro. Well, I apologize that you have too much money, but, uh, but, but I know that a lot of us are thinking about what's the financial opportunity. Well, TubeFilter, and this is an older stat, said 200 million people are earning money from digital content creation. 200 million people. And of course, that could be anywhere from a dollar to a million dollars and beyond. But the actual fact that like the internet is sending money to people is happening. And this was actually a couple years old now. A more recent stat is Yahoo Finance revealing that the creator economy is the fastest growing segment of small business. And the creator economy is this new job type of working from home and creating content and monetizing that content and actually making a living and being even self-employed with a real business. Like the Yahoo Finance talking about more than opening up a coffee shop or open, you know, leasing some space or running some other type of business. The creator economy is the fastest growing type of small business. But I was floored by this next step. This just came out a few months ago. But Goldman Sachs Research, really smart, investors and like economists and stuff over on Wall Street, Wall Street, right? They say this, that the creator economy could approach a half a trillion dollars by 2027. And that right now the TAM, now we're getting geeky already, but this is the marketing term, it's, it's the total addressable market, that's what the TAM is, is about $250 billion. And that in the next three years, they're estimating that the total addressable market, the amount of money in the system, the amount of money that is available to people who take bold action and position themselves right and create an unfair advantage. And whether that's an extra 10K a year or whether that's a six-figure, seven-figure business, the total addressable market is gonna expand and double in the next three years. Now this is wild because I've been doing this for a while. I, the first YouTube channel I started was for my church in 2007, about a year after YouTube really got official in 2006. And so I've seen all kinds of seasons on YouTube, all different eras at some of the biggest events, and I've gotten to meet and interview over like 500 different creators and entrepreneurs using video. So basically, Goldman Sachs is saying everything that's happened in the last 17, 18 years the money that's been generated, the opportunity, the stories that you've he heard, 
the Mary's Nest, the doctor's eye health, all of that stuff, the people you're going to hear from here, everything that's happened in the last 17 years is going to double in the next three. Say acceleration. Yeah, acceleration. Everything that happened in the last 17 is going to double in the next three. And again, one of the things we're going to be fighting against here is I know you're like, yeah, but, but competition feels fierce, for sure. But, you know, views might kind of feel down on my channel, for sure. But, but math is math. And if you position yourself right, that level of just sheer finance and sheer opportunity is so wild, you want to get positioned where the wind is. You know, if you're going to be paddling anyways, you, want to be, you might as well be paddling with the current. The next three years are going to be the best three years in the creator economy. Well, what about recession? Well, even in recession, if 4% unemployment goes to 8% unemployment, still 9 out of 10 people are still employed. Recession, yes, means that some people are struggling, but how can you position yourself? How can you be smart now? I believe this event is strategic because if the next three years are going to be the best three years in the creator economy, we better get some tools, some strategies, some ideas at this event to maximize, maximize that. Do you agree? Yes. So YouTube is healthy, growing, and it's the most profitable platform to establish your brand. But there are some challenges. And of course, this journey is not going to be easy. And of course, everything worth getting in life is uphill. And so I've really tried to study in the coming weeks and months leading up to this and really identifying the three biggest threats that I see that you're facing and I'm facing, that if we're going to win on YouTube and win with video content and video marketing, that we've got to overcome. And the first one is competition, is competition. Right now, over 200 million people consider themselves creators worldwide. There's about 113 million active YouTube channels. That's a lot. That's a lot. So how, how do we stand out? How do we how do we beat the competition? Well, one good news when you look at these stats is that the average person, yes, they got an active YouTube channel, but they're not being consistent. You know, they're not uploading regularly. They're not strategizing. They're not thinking through things. So if you just get a little bit better than the majority, we've been saying that competition is highest for low effort content. Here's what I can tell you in 2024 at Grow a Video Live. YouTube has changed. The market has changed. You can't just get in the game, throw some videos out there. I don't even think you can really get lucky. You might get lucky with one video, but you're not going to accidentally build a real creator business. You got to be serious. I think that years ago, if you were playing checkers when it came to video content, Oh, you made a few moves. Oh, cool, I got a king. Wow, that's amazing. You could win. But the game has changed. It's 2024, and you have to be playing chess. What does that mean? It's different, strategic. You're thinking, how many moves ahead are you thinking? And so when you think about the other active channels, a lot of people, they didn't make it to grow a video live. Big mistake. Like, they're not here. They didn't, they're, they're not investing like you are. So you already have an advantage by being here because you're thinking more deeply, you're thinking more strategically, networking, being smart. But I love this quote from Thomas Edison who said this, continued innovation is the best way to beat the competition. Continued innovation. I was talking with somebody today in the comments on my Think Media podcast, and they were just talking about how their views are down. They said, oh, my ad revenue is down 70%. And my response was probably not very kind. I mean, I met, it was very loving, but just, you know, coaches are coaches, I guess. I'm happy now, but by the afternoon, I might be a little bit mean, so just get ready for it. But uh, I'm just going to tell you the truth. But I was like, it sounds like you may need to reinvent yourself and expand your money plan and your strategy. I mean, I, may, I know that we want empathy, like, oh, revenue's down 60%. What are you going to do, cry about it? Or reinvent yourself. Come up with a new strategy, a new game plan. It, the creator, do you know how many billions are in this system? So yeah, your ad revenue might be down, but there's so many different angles and approaches. Continued innovation is the best way to beat the competition. Question, are you interested in learning the best strategies that are working right now to get views and subscribers on YouTube? 
Well, I want to invite you to our free five day tube 1K challenge where I'm going to be going through our seven step YouTube success system entirely for free. Over 10,000 people have used this exact framework to start and grow successful YouTube channels, whether for their business, whether as a side hustle or as a creator, or even as a ministry and a nonprofit. And I'm going to be teaching through these seven steps at tube1kchallenge.com. Every one of the five challenge sessions will include a strategy that you can immediately apply to start growing your channel as well as a challenge something to do that will get you moving taking action and creating content that will lead to growth plus there's going to be software giveaways tech giveaways and even a brand new youtube camera so if you're interested just go to tube1kchallenge.com or click the link in the show notes and now Let's get back into the episode. One of my mentors told me four things, and I want you to write this down. Four things, that means you'll always stay ahead. That if you want to continue to win in business, you want to continue to win in the creator economy, you always have to do these four things. Number one, you got to outwork the competition. Number two, you got to outlearn the competition. Number three, you got to outstrategize the competition. And number four, you got to outlast the competition. Hmm. So we gotta actually put some work in. Sean, can I just like not even try and go viral and like become a millionaire on YouTube? No, you can't, you just can't. That won't happen, absolutely not. It'll take some work. Can I just like rely on, on the information from yesterday? No, you gotta keep learning, you gotta keep leveling up. Can I just like play the old playbook? No, you have to out strategize the competition. And, and can I just do this for a week or two or a month or two? No, it, this is a lifestyle. Probably the most important thing to protect, I just feel like in today's world in general, is your mindset, what you're listening to. If you're feasting on negativity and so much, because if, if you're looking for a way to say, yeah, well, it's not possible, it's too saturated, it's too crowded now, well, you're going to get what you're looking for. But when you, you're going to meet people here and you might be sitting next to somebody who's like, oh, no, actually, my views are up. <laughs> like, Oh no, actually my views are down, but I, I actually pivoted and I created this monetization strategy. I talked to uh, Chana, who is a techno dad, who we haven't connected in a few years, my guy, and, and he, he joined uh, one of our programs uh, years ago and has been through different seasons and he's in the audio and, and um, like home theater and he had one idea. And one idea was, man, what if I created um, a Blu-ray disc that people could put in their home theater systems that could help them tune their speakers and do all this stuff inside of their home theaters. And then what if, because again, what he did was he productized something he could sell in his niche, right? There's, there it is. If you want to buy one, any home theater, just $99 and you can get one from Chana. He'll give you a discount here for the event, the event discount. <laughs> Um, oh, my ad revenue is down. Why don't you create a product? You got to build a real business. What kind of product could you create? What kind of business could you create? So he's sharing with this me in the lobby yesterday. So I'm like, okay. And, uh, and, and so he's like, yeah, you know, I've, I've gone through these different seasons. I've pivoted. I've done some different stuff. I've also been through some challenges lately. But yeah, we launched this product and we've already done almost $300,000 in sales. What was your marketing channel, Techno Dad? YouTube, baby. YouTube, baby. <laughs> no ads, baby. No ads, no paid ads, no nothing else. One product. You know you're just one away? One video? One channel? One product? One relationship? One pivot in your business? Listen, I love you, and this is a place of empathy, but this environment is no excuses. First, let's hug. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that it's hard right now. But then let's, we got to kill those excuses. One pivot, one strategy, one adjustment. And that could be the very thing, because if you're just stuck, well, I just wish it was like it was a few years ago. It isn't. But you could beat the competition, and we're going to master our inner game. We've got amazing people coming up. And it actually makes me think back when, you know, I posted my first video October 3rd, 2010, 
and thinking about the inner game, thinking about the mindset, and thinking about the things that can happen when we start thinking about the competition and all this other stuff. In fact, let's actually just play this video. This is the first video that I posted uh, on YouTube. All right, so uh, this is, I guess, the first Sean Thanks vlog. And uh, I'm gonna try to vlog every single day, um, mainly so I can remember what I'm even doing um, and what's going on, because I just feel like I have a lot that I'm thinking about, and I figured, hey, why not share it? And if you find something interesting, that's awesome. Now, this is definitely uh, as real as it gets, so I'm not gonna try to be energetic or entertaining. Um, though maybe sometimes I will. But anyways. Um... Yeah, yeah, listen. If, uh, if that guy could be here, then it, it's possible for anybody. I mean, it's just, there's hope for you. There's hope for all of us. And, but you know, I'll, I'll never forget because on this idea of, of competition, I've really learned this that our greatest competition actually isn't external. Our greatest competition is internal. Phil Knight, the founder of Nike, he's doing all right now financially. He's a billionaire. Um, Co-founder and chairman of Nike Inc. Obviously everything they've built, everything that they've created he said this, that beating the competition is actually relatively easy, but beating yourself is the never-ending commitment. I've learned that our greatest competition is ourselves. And when I think back to 2010, and I think about posting that first video, and even as I hesitated to, to even launch that video, I'd been doing videos for my church. I'd seen other YouTubers kind of blowing up. I had a, a friend I had met that is now the co-author of YouTube Secrets who's encouraging me to start, but I was stuck in my own head. Imposter syndrome. Man, like, I think the odds are against me. Why even try? Like, man, what if, am I gonna be, am I gonna be judged, like worrying about what others were gonna think? You know, for me, I remember back then, I waited tables at Red Robin as, uh, while I was also working at a church and trying to create videos. I remember like this, these two girls would come in that I went to high school with. They didn't even know who I was. You know, they're much more popular. I was kind of in that counterculture skateboard scene. And I would be their waiter. And they had some cool job. And they would drive up in this nice car. And, you know, and I just felt, too, like they were just so much further ahead. Because I'm, like, waiting tables, which is an amazing job, by the way. And I'm so grateful that I did. And it's, it's incredible. And I think everybody should work in food service at some point, And it can even make a great career. But even as I was sitting there, maybe you felt like that before, like people are just ahead of you and like you're too late or you're behind. And I just remember even that, like I was carrying that over to YouTube, like just my identity stuff. And we're wondering like, well, people are going to judge me. Like, who do I think I am to even post videos? Imposter syndrome. Um, You know, I don't know. You might feel like here at Think Media, it's kind of the lights are polished and like I've been working on my speaking for, for years and all this different stuff, and it might seem like we have it together. I want to encourage you, we don't have it together. It's really messy. And I've learned that, that your greatest competition is you, and you, you got you to gotta start messy. And if we're going to get real, I mean, I, like even as I then started posting videos and thinking about the climb, I mean, again, you'd think that maybe it was just, just up and up and up, but man... My greatest competition has been me. Like, once I started to have some success on YouTube, 2018, 2019, my channel, my platform got bigger than my character. I started to feel this emotional pressure. I started to turn to alcohol. I started drinking too much. Started smoking weed and started trying to look for different things to to get through just the pressure of success. But if I'm honest too, sometimes success can go to your head and it's deceptive and you start just making compromises a little here, a little there. I'm messy. And I even think about building a business that I've been building with my wife. We've been married 18 years. And uh, we were just reflecting over even just this last year. This last year was absolutely the worst year in our marriage. 
And after really some traveling too much with the three-year-old and one-year-old, my calendar got out of control. We had some, our friend circle and some people that think that were just so close work with us and went through some transitions that were just kind of painful and confusing. But it wasn't the travel or it wasn't those challenges. The biggest thing that hit us was, was disunity because my wife had some very strong convictions and she is brilliant. She's a spirit-filled woman of God. She's got discernment. And she saw some things pretty clearly that I just wasn't listening to her about and some decisions that I delayed and some decisions that, some things I didn't address. And that began to drive a wedge in our relationship. And she told me that this past December, she was actually at a point where she's like, I don't know if we're gonna make it and I don't have hope. I think we might be headed for divorce. This is four months ago. I'm messy. Think Media, our team, we're messy. But we're on mission. And I've learned this, that you're always one decision away from making the right decision. You know, as I started to have hard conversations with my wife, I was like, all right. We changed my calendar. We got in counseling. We met with a pastor couple friend of ours, Mike Signorelli and his wife. They began to pour into us and just encourage us that the pressures of kids and entrepreneurship and building and the pain of maybe you've had relationships that you felt betrayed in. Maybe you've been the person who's let other people down. Just all the mess. Walking us through all of that and, and you know, it's not always the case, but a few months later now, I'm excited to say that our marriage is stronger than ever, my wife's words. But here's the point, is I'm messy, and so are you. And I think that our greatest competition is ourselves. And the thing that holds us back oftentimes, it's not the external threats. It really isn't. It's the getting up and facing that procrastination and that negative thinking. And it is maybe dealing with that bad habit and that thing that's holding you back. But even though we're messy, we're on mission. And this whole journey over this last 10 plus years has been messy but we decided not to quit. And we had a conviction that by God's grace, we could get through anything that comes our way because you're always one decision away from making a change that could change the rest of your life. Your greatest competition is not the external threats. It is the internal battle. And I want to encourage you that there is no superstars here at Grow A Video Live. Some of the people, they do have a million subscribers and they got a million dollars in the bank and that stuff's cool, but listen, we're all humans and we're all super jacked up if I really got to know you. <laughs> right? But you're on mission and you could do this. Here's the second threat is mistrust, mistrust. Mistrust. We just got to be aware of what's happening in the market right now. Mistrust means to be suspicious of and have no confidence in. This is the environment. This was kicked off by the pandemic and by 2020. Whether it was wondering if we're being told lies by the government, wondering who we can trust. Americans distrust Facebook and TikTok because of data and, and what are they doing with our private information. Now AI has accelerated this. Can we even trust the clips that we're seeing? Can we trust? And one of the things that's happened in the creator economy is as things have matured, it's, it's seeing crypto scams that happened and rug pulls or people that endorsed brand deals or products and then the products didn't turn out well. And so you just gotta be aware 
that there's massive mistrust and that there's overarching suspicion of everything. And that's where people are coming from, and that is their point of view. There, we're, we're ramping up to probably the craziest election uh, here in America, and not only that, but there is, people are wondering, like, the misinformation of AI and of deep fakes and of all this different stuff that can happen, mistrust. Well, how do we combat this threat? Write this down. Authenticity is the new currency. 2024 and beyond, authenticity is the new currency. You know what the greatest threat to AI is? Humans. Come on, Terminator. <laughs> Come on, Sarah Connor, John Connor. Even if we gotta send someone back to fix the AI situation, we're gonna be able to work. Humans are the greatest threat, threat to the machines. Whatever. So remember, Brian said laugh at the dumb jokes. Uh, <laughs> Uh, authenticity is the new currency. Um, you know, Google has this ranking factor for their websites, and they say it's called E-E-A-T, eat, and it's that, it's how they'll judge websites, and they created a new category called experience, and they added it to two E's in front, E-E-A-T, and they added the new, the new thing experience because of AI. Right around the time that chat GPT came out, they added the experience. Why? Because AI can't actually have an experience with the product. I don't want AI to, to talk to me and coach me about how to have intimate human emotional relationships. I don't want AI to coach me and just, you know, generate a video about a product that it hasn't been able to experience. Like if you were gonna do a product review on YouTube, and there's lots of these out there with these faceless channels. There's just a bunch of recycled information and random clips of the product, but as the person actually used it. Here's the point. Authenticity is the new currency. So you being real, you tapping into your humanness, that's the way forward. And vulnerability, authenticity, we're seeing that shift. We're seeing what they would call the era of excess on YouTube slowing down. The Mr. Beast, how big can we go? A billion dollar lot, yacht, a trillion dollar yacht. Can we grind a Ferrari in a shredder? And that stuff will still happen. <laughs> but it, that was called the era of excess. And what's happening now is people are like, yo, give me some raw. Give me some real. Like, let me see who you are. Like, turn off the lights a little bit and let me see, like, the, you know, you without the polish. So how are we going to combat mistrust and that threat? Authenticity. Authenticity. And number three is overwhelm. We got to be aware that there's just massive overwhelm when it comes to how much content there is, how many social platforms there are. Who here is like, you just can't take it if another social platform launches right now, wave at me, right? <laughs> Who here was like, well, Threads is out? Like, what are we, am I supposed to use that now? Who here was already stressed? Like, am I supposed to post everywhere? Like, am I posting on TikTok and Meta and. Like, there's a lot of overwhelm. And nine out of 10 creators say they've experienced burnout. 75% of creators are stressed out. Who relates with that? <laughs> I'm so stressed right now, you know. Uh, and, and one article said consumers are overwhelmed by digital messaging. Here's a question for you. I don't know, uh, team, if we have a, 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 an award we could give away, like a gift or a piece of tech or something, uh, but I want to select a winner. Who here thinks... They have the most unread messages or emails on their phone here. <laughs> Who here? Stand, stand to your feet if you, you think you got real numbers. Let me know what your real numbers are. Stand up and then shout me out. 32,000. 32, How about you, sir? <laughs> 134,600. Sit down if you're not that high. How about you, sir? 138,000. Are we talking emails? Probably, I'm, yeah. That's your emails right there on your home screen. You're sick. <laughs> and one of the, one, the good news is that we have our Think Media counselors here that are gonna be helping people <laughs> recover. So okay, 138,000. 152,000 unread emails. You guys ready? 443,000. 443,000, wait. Chana thought he had it, but how about you, sir? Four. <laughs> Woo. Anybody 
Oh, wait. 527,000 emails. Chana gave the high five and, the, and the, the crown to the queen. Can we give it up and give a round of applause for the most overwhelmed? I'm impressed. So let's, hey, make sure to visit us. We'll hook you up with some, a cool piece of tech or something. Uh, congratulations. You're like, Sean's giving out awards for the most stressed and overwhelmed? It's real. So if that doesn't tell us a picture, by the way, did you know that you can declare bankruptcy on Gmail now? Have you heard about this feature? Yeah, you can declare email bankruptcy because of this happening and it just helps you start over. You want another piece, another tip? Check this out. Go to your email and search the word unsubscribe. And then it'll filter, because I know you're like me. I got like 33,000. I'm like, well, there's a few things in there that I want to like look up or go back to someday. But yet they're mixed with all the bombardment. If you search the word unsubscribe and then delete all of that, that'll be all the newsletters and all just the random stores and the jeans and Target and all that stuff. And then, and then it'll bring you, but anyways, overwhelm, overwhelm. And so you gotta be aware that this is what people are experiencing. It's what you're experiencing. And these are threats that we gotta overcome in terms of how we're communicating, maybe our content strategy, maybe increasing quality, reducing volume, and just being aware of the threats that we're navigating. As we land the plane on this session, I stumbled upon a better way to get consistent results with video, and you can apply this to business and in life, and it comes from this book called Atomic Habits. And uh, this is the insight. It says that those who struggle focus on goals, but those who win focus on systems. If we're gonna beat the competition, beat mistrust, if we're gonna get an edge and create an unfair advantage in the creator economy, it's not gonna be about setting the best goals. Who doesn't want a gold play button? Who doesn't want a six-figure YouTube business? A lot of times everyone's got the same goals. The key is do you have the same systems? And not everybody's got the same systems. James Clear, the author said this, your goal is your desired outcome, but your system is the collection of daily habits that's gonna get you there. Do you have systems for your business? Systems for predictable revenue, systems for your YouTube channel. Those who struggle focus on goals, those who win focus on systems. And here's the quote, you do not rise to the level of your goals, but you're gonna to fall to the level of your systems. Why is my YouTube channel struggling? Why are my views down? Why can I not get an edge? Why, why do I hit peaks in my business and then valleys in my business? Maybe because you set goals every year January, new year, new you, I got my resolution, great. But do you have a system? Do you have a repeatable pattern that you can follow? And when I think back to the Sean that first punched fear in the face and pressed record, but his video was really bad, and the next ones were as well, I was stuck at this time because I did not have a system. We don't rise to the level of our goals, we fall to the level of our systems. I hope that you've been getting value out of that session from our event, Grow With Video Live. And subscribe because we are actually gonna be releasing more sessions in the coming months going through our 7R YouTube success system. Now, if you actually want a shortcut to that information, I'm going through that as well on our free five-day YouTube challenge that depending on when you're listening to this is happening right now. There is limited replays so you can get synchronized with us. You can jump in at tube1kchallenge.com. There's a link in the show notes as well. And I really think you're going to enjoy learning not just the strategies that we're covering daily, but also every day there's an actual challenge because here's our ethic at the Think Media Podcast. We don't just consume information, we apply it. We are hashtag action takers. You got to punch fear in the face. You got to punch perfectionism in the face. You got to press record. You got to get uncomfortable. And that is not going to happen by just watching more content. It's by doing something. And that's why we call it a challenge because it should be challenging. So if you're interested in that, check that out in the show notes. 
If you're on the YouTube version of this podcast, I love hearing your feedback in the comments and I would love to know what's a struggle that you're having right now because I'm always looking to serve you with future episodes and helping you overcome the challenges you might be facing with YouTube or online business. It also means the world if you rate and review and like and share the podcast wherever you watch or listen. And until next time, my name is Sean Cannell, your guide to building a profitable YouTube channel. I appreciate you and we will talk soon.